a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank Part 16, making the water gauge top fitting for the boiler and assembling the parts. This is something I've never had to do before. Normally the water gauge top fitting is made as part of the boiler, but in this case it's not so. The good news though is it's a very simple part to make, and it's even simpler to make if you have a piece of half inch diameter phosphor bronze, which I don't, so I'm having to turn a half inch piece from a much larger piece of phosphor bronze which is very wasteful and time consuming. Turning brass or phosphor bronze in the lathe is a very messy experience. If you rotate the part very slowly then the chips come off and fall almost straight away down into the chip tray. Which is all very well but with the lathe running slowly it takes ages. So there's a tendency to speed up the job. Then you get chips flying all over the place, everywhere. In this clip the lathe is running in back gear so the spindle is revolving quite slowly. But to get through this very simple and quite boring operation I've speeded up the video to double normal speed. And also I've edited the sequence to shorten it because it took quite a while. Using the micrometer I measured the test cut. The first attempt was too small but the second attempt was much better. So now I can take a final cut all the way down the work. In this clip I've disengaged the back gear so the spindle is moving much faster. And as I previously mentioned now the chips are going everywhere. There is a very simple method to stop this from happening. All you have to do is hold a piece of paper between you and where the chips are coming from. I can't do that for the video because all you would see would be the back of a large piece of white paper. It's not a good idea to use a piece of wood to deflect the chips because if you catch this in the work or in the chuck it's going to fly across the workshop. The video is still running in real time and I'm nearly at the end of the job. There are now many chips of phosphor bronze all over the lathe bed, on the lathe saddle and on me and the problem is they're all very sharp. A final test using the micrometer shows that the finished size is half an inch. Apart from the very end bit which was a test cut, this was too small and now I'm machining it away. When I set a micrometer like this, I would generally use a twist drill shank. As I'm getting older my eyesight is not getting any better. I obtain the initial setting using the twist drill and then I fine adjust the micrometer to correspond with the numbers printed on the side of it. Now I need to turn down the end of the bar to 3 eighths of an inch and thread it 3 eighths by 32 threads per inch. I've drilled a hole down the centre and here I'm removing the sharp edges using a file. With a 3 eighths by 32 threads per inch die fitted in the tailstock die holder, I'm manually threading the 3 eighths part of the bar. Now it's time to part it off. Phosphor bronze grabs the parting tool very quickly, but in this case it's not too severe eventually it locks in and cuts properly. I think I was just feeding in the parting tool a bit too slowly. Now to make the other bit, I've centre drilled the end of it and I've turned the half inch part a bit longer. I'm drilling the hole tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. This is going to be the horizontal part of the fitting into which I will screw the top part of the water gauge. Back at the boiler I measured the distance from the centre of the hole in the boiler at the top to the end of the lower bush. And here I'm marking the position of it which is 5 eighths of an inch. Here I'm threading the hole in the top part of the assembly using a tap which is 3 eighths by 32 threads per inch. I parted off this component a little bit longer than I needed it because the centre hole of the vertical threaded part that fits into the boiler needs to be exactly on this mark. The internal hole was just the right length so when I parted off the component the hole didn't go all the way through. I picked up the part from the chip tray and fitted it into the chuck the other way round. I used a chamfering tool to chamfer it and then I cleaned up across the front. I've been making a lot of things like this recently so I omitted the silver soldering operation. But unfortunately I made a mistake. If you look back at the chamfering operation it's too deep a chamfer and I think the top part moved slightly relative to the main shaft when it was being silver soldered. The sum total of these two errors means that the top fitting doesn't stick out quite far enough. 
so the water gauge top fitting does not align with the water gauge bottom fitting. I had three choices, either start again and make a new fitting, use a thick washer on the top part of the water gauge where it screws into the fitting. What I chose to do was screw the bottom fitting into a 5 16 by 32 union nut, clamp this union nut in the three jaw chuck, and reduce the thickness of the hexagon part of the lower water gauge fitting. Then I cut the thread all the way down to the hexagon part. We all make mistakes, and I like to show mine sometimes. It was a simple fix. And here I'm checking the alignment of the water gauge glass tube. It's very important that this glass tube is not a tight fit in the water gauge. The tube at this stage was too long. To shorten it, I scored it all the way round, and then I just snapped it off with my Barco spanner. It's quite important, as always, that this end of the tube is not sharp, because very shortly I'm going to be prodding it with my finger. By rubbing it on a piece of emery cloth, the sharp edges are removed. Here's the process in full for fitting the glass tube. Push it through the top fitting, put on the o-ring, then put on the nut. At this stage, the top nut needs to be very slack. Then you fit the lower nut onto the piece of glass, followed by pressing the lower o-ring into position. At this stage, I recheck the alignment, and in this clip, I'm making a very small adjustment to the position of the lower part of the water gauge. When I was happy with it, I tightened the nuts. They don't need to be tight, finger tight is normally sufficient. Usually when I fit the top nut I apply a very small amount of Loctite 542. Here I'm using a cloth to remove every trace of Loctite 542 from the bottom fitting. This morning the postman delivered a package. And when I opened the package, this is what was inside it. A 135 piece tool set. And this was sent to me by a viewer by the name of Dan. Thanks Dan, it's really good. It's a very comprehensive assortment of screwdriver bits all of which will also fit in my electric drill, should I need to use that. This set comes with a ratchet handle for the screwdriver bits too, and the end is removable, so you can put some bits in there if you want to just travel with this screwdriver handle. As well as the main screwdriver bit set, there's a miniature version in a separate box. This is ideal for working on very small parts. These bits are called torque bits, and I have a few of these randomly in a box, but whenever I find one, I never have the right size and waste far too much time rummaging through the box. And now I will no longer need to do that because I will always know where the bits are. Once again, thank you, Dan, I appreciate this. And where have I got to now with the simplex job? Well, the top fitting is made and fitted, the water gauge is fitted to the boiler, and the glass is in place. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.